This program contains views and opinions that may not be suitable for all audiences. Audience discretion is advised. Welcome to Test Me and Talk, everybody. It's been a couple of weeks, but, uh, well, last week, I think I think a lot of people will understand and forgive us for not doing a show last week. Uh, but um, but if you if you only listen to this show and this is your first time or anything, uh, the reason why we didn't do a show last week is because um, uh, Juario, Justin Carmichael, tragically took his own life, so we didn't have a show. I discussed it a little bit more in depth on the most recent Constructive Deconstruction, which went up, um, I think it went up the day before we recorded this, so um, so it should be up on the site if you want to hear more of my thoughts in depth, and I believe you, um, I'm, I am your host, Norma the Ranting Thespian, and my co-host this week is The Omega. Hello, hello. And I know uh, you and uh, Tiamanda Hagen talked a bit about, about him in uh, your latest lesbian talk, I believe, right? Yeah, we... We, we did touch on it because we we didn't want to be insensitive to our guest, mm-hmm. um, so we, we didn't really do it for Memorial. I kind of did on my blog. Yeah. Um, and I know that um, Zar was on um, uh, when Nash was, was streaming. She uh, she went on to share her thoughts. So yeah. our thoughts are out there. We just and we just wanted to put it out there. And I will look into that if you're in that kind of place, there are people and who are there for you. And even if it's, you know, you don't want to talk to anyone, you know, there are hotlines for every country. Just call one. You're not a bother to them. Their job is to talk to you. Mm-hmm. And, you know, if you don't have anyone else, talk to us, you know? Yes. That's, that's what we're here for. Talk, talk to anyone that you feel comfortable talking to. Yes. Just please, you know, and, and then, we'll, we'll, you know, whatever happens will happen from there, I suppose. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, all of us, I, I think, just about every co-host and host of all between all three of my shows that had something to say about Justin has said it at this point. Um, I just wanted to note it on this show because then, you know, people who may not have been as close to the situation, you know, they'll they'll realize and they'll understand. Yeah, we we didn't do it last week because at the time of the normal recording, it was a little too fresh. So it's like it's like all three of us were like, yeah, no, not it just not not gonna couldn't. no. Oh, but um. So yeah, and and this is a really horrible way to segue into it, but it it it, it fits unfortunately. Um, right before we started recording, uh, we got the news that Philip Seymour Hoffman died. I, I think that's right. I was never, I never really got into his stuff, but um, I, under, I understand he's you know really really talent. He was really talented. Uh, won some acting awards, and it, he was you know, young too. He's forty six or was forty six. That's only eleven years older than me. Wow. Oh, wait, no, it's twelve. I'm sorry. Yeah. It, 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 yeah. It's, wow. Just oh. There's that, and then oh, wasn't there like a few other other notable people who'd passed on or something? Or um, there was another actor who I had not heard of, but he uh, he was also an Academy Award winner. Yeah. It's like God damn. Uh, can, can we hold off on the more professional, you know, people dying for a little while, please? <laughs> I mean, just hold off on everybody dying. Mm-hmm. Just don't, don't do it, guys. Yeah, it's like, it's like Mr. Grim Reaper. Can you take off for a month or two, please? Ah, uh, but in the midst of all of this horrible, this this rough stuff, the bad news, the heavy issues, I, I do have some good news. Um. For those who've been listening to my show, my, well, all of my shows recently, they know I have a page over on Patreon.com. If you go over there, patreoncom slash gomer 21 X, you'll get you know get the thing. And what Patreon is is you can don't you can uh, pledge a certain amount per whatever the the user sets up. In my case, it's a certain amount per month, and at the end of every month, you know your money gets charged and it goes to the producer. And I've I've put it up there. I put it up there. Said you know what you know, however much per month because I don't want to break anybody. If they really want to help support me monetarily for all of these shows and for the site and everything, I don't want to break them. Especially if I do it per show. There's like upwards of twelve shows per month. <laughs> it's just it, it wouldn't work out that way. Yeah. But I I do have I don't have much in the way of incentives right now. But I do have two. One of which is for five dollars. 
you get you know your name put on the patron page and you also get a shout out on the next thespian talk which in this case it's this one and Woo-hoo. i have one five dollar uh patron and a ten dollar patron so they both get their shout outs on this one real quick about the ten dollar um patrons is it's basically early access to any show that i put up because these shows are also going up on youtube as well as on my site and on Nerdvice and everything. So I could just leave it unlisted until it goes live, then li- relist it. And the link that it, the uh, YouTube link just goes up on the Patreon page. And, you know, if you donated $10 or more, you could see it early. Um, so that, that's the only two that I have so far. I'm working on trying to get others. We'll, we'll, we'll see how things work out. But um, as promised, uh, there are two people. Um, Going by the names that they've actually put on their, you know, on the things on Patreon, I have Jen E M who donated, who is pledged uh, five dollars, and yay Jen. Yes, and I have Elizabeth who has pledged ten dollars for a total of fifteen. Yay Elizabeth. Yes. So thank you both very much. I I I know I've thanked, I'm pretty sure I've thanked both of you personally. I've talked to a lot of people in the past week, but uh, again, as promised on the show, big shout out to the two of you. It's not much, but it's a start. Hopefully, maybe people will get the idea. Huh, maybe this guy is worth, you know, supporting in this way. And it's not like we're gonna be broken, you know. It's like, it's like, you know what? If I had, if I had sixty viewers, you know, sixty regular viewers to my stuff, and they all don't, you know, they all pledge like ten dollars a month, that would be, you know, kind of decent. Yeah. So you know, that would that would be that would be great. Um. And someone asked me the other day if I was going to use Patreon. I'm not at this point in time because I, I work with a full-time and part-time job. Mm-hmm. And so that, that takes care of um, my, my site dues every week and stuff like that. So, But thank you for thinking of me. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, a, a little bit about the Patreon stuff. I do have the goals like want to make sure the site, the site is able to be upkept. So that's where the $100 goal is, uh, 300 for an upgrade. And then there's also the audio video upgrades. And then eventually, if, if we reach the longest reaching goal at 3000 per month, uh, I would be looking at some new filming space. Because right now, I am in a more cramped area. It's doable. I've, I've actually got the uh, Mamma Mia review filmed. I just need to finish up on voiceovers and everything. Mamma Mia, who my baby daddy the musical? Yes. <laughs> I mean, much. I'm just saying. Pretty much. Just say. <laughs> I'm not going to deny that, but uh, it's doable, but I, I I can do better, but it's not the most important part. You know, most important part, you could probably hear it. I could use some audio upgrades. I mean, it's not, it's probably not horrible, horrible, but I could do better, especially since I've, I've noticed some audio recordings of mine. There's like this low hum and, and, and it, it, it comes and goes. I don't know if that's going to be true for this show. I do what I can to get rid of it. I can't always guarantee it, so... But I do. Well, have... I turned off my I turned off my space heater, so yeah, <laughs> we should be okay on this. <laughs> well, no, it, it's not your space heater or anything. It's just it, it's just. Well, of course, uh... it's not. It's off. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, but uh, besides website stuff, you know, the first thing is going to be audio upgrades, and I've already got my eye on a mic, so it, it, it's something that I'd really like to get my hands on. Um. But again, if you want to check it out, uh, patreon.com slash gomer two one double X. Um if if you can, you know, pledge the money my way. It would it would be greatly appreciated. All of it will be. And even even if all you do is just like, you know, hit the uh links on the side of the page, you know, the, the advertising links for uh, Rift Tracks, or donate directly, any any help is appreciated. And believe me, it, it is needed at this point, because um yeah, it, I feel like the economy is trying to blacklist me. For from normal jobs, uh, or maybe it's you just. You know, hmm? I realized today that the uh, the I don't know what are we calling it the economic downturn? Are we still calling it that? I was calling it the global financial crisis, but then no one's been using that in a while. That was almost six years ago. Huh? Can you believe? It doesn't really feel like that long ago, does it? No, it doesn't. Huh? But just wow. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Uh, okay, good. It wasn't just me. It was like, really? That can't. That can't be six years ago. Yeah, I know. But yeah, six years ago this uh, this spring. Hmm. Damn. What was I doing six years ago? What was I doing? Let's see. Two thousand seven. Um, spring of two thousand seven. 
Nah, I wasn't doing much of anything. But fall of 2007, I started back to finish up my AA in theater. No, no, 2008. 2008? Like yeah. Because six nine, years. 12, 13, 12, 13. I can't math. <laughs> but no, spring of 2008, I was... Okay, spring of 2008, I was finishing up my associates in theater. There we go. So, yeah. Um, I was I was working in telecom, and then the bottom dropped out of the market. And then I moved down to D.C. with some friends, and I rented my house to a friend who ended up losing his job. Hmm. And then well, I eventually lost the house uh, in 2009. Ouch. That was a way long time. Well, you know, you do what you can. Yeah. You do what you got to do. Oh, man. But um... And also the album Dookie by Green Day, mm-hmm. 20 years old this year. Really? We're old. It's we too are. late for us. And you know what? Uh, I, I also saw that Sonic Three, Sonic the Hedgehog Three, and Knuckles is twenty years old. No, sh- I, mean, I guess it would be. Oh my god. Oh god, we are old people. We're old, Omega. What are we gonna do? It. Eat some soup. Eat our soup. Yes. Not like not like a Dodger. Dodger of Zion posted a picture of of like st- a stadium um, restaurant meal. Oh yeah, I saw that on Facebook. Yeah, and it was like thirteen dollars or so. Eight, eight. What was it? Eight, thirteen dollars or so for a cup of soup. They'll they'll run you through. And it's like, yeah, it's like okay, you know. That's what? why people tailgate. Yeah, I mean seriously. I mean, I say that it's always a, it's a bad thing. It's not. I like tailgating. It's lots of fun. Mm-hmm. But if you know why people tailgate, that's why. Yeah. Goddamn. But it's like it's like I commented on the picture. It's like you know what, that thing had better be so good that the moment it touches my lips, it makes me feel like I had the most intense orgasm ever. Because if it doesn't, then it's not fucking worth it. Oh, just jeebus! You know, price calipers, I tell you. Oh, so, so, so my shout outs they they they, you know that you know my 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 patrons consist of my shout outs for this week go and check them out you know go you know thank them and and i thank them again yay but uh do you have any shout outs oh she shout outs um yay people uh actually <laughs> yes i do um you should actually just here we go you should totally follow my friend magic steve on twitter yes and his handle is magic steve 83 and if you saw the picture of the, uh, if you saw if you saw the actual thing, you saw the picture of the um, the balloon art Tardis from Magfest and the Dalek. Uh, that was him. He's an amazingly talented. Uh, he's a balloon artist. Uh, he's a producer. He, uh, he does professional videos like for banks and stuff like that. And he does you know videos for I think there's a local wrestling circuit that watches his stuff. But he's on YouTube. Um, but follow him on Twitter. He's a good guy. Yes. And where can we find him on Twitter? He is at Magic Steve eighty three. That's what I thought. I, I wasn't quite sure, but I, I figured you knew, or at least had it in front of you. <laughs> uh, so yes, and I I got to see that doll again, for, you know, firsthand, or at least while he was finishing it up, and and that was great. Well, we came up to the room to film something, and everyone's like crowding, and we're like, oh, sorry, mind the Dalek. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, you know what? It was the. Uh... Um, the chirpy reaction video. Yes, it was. was. Yes, it was. The second time ever that I've been, at least in part, of a video on Tig with Tig front and center. I swear I did not plan it that way. <laughs> I just like seeing people have to watch Chirpy because I had to see it like the original time. <laughs> so, so you're like me. You want to see other people suffer through this. Yeah. <laughs> I, I had to see it. There you go. Oh, there's so oh, and there's so many rednecks around here. I have an iPad. I actually grabbed Chirpy from YouTube and converted it to where it could be put on the iPad. <laughs> I'm so evil. <laughs> okay, but um, well, with that, speaking speaking of sex with animals, oh God, that's a hell of a segue. He said, speaking of sex with animals. Yes, our first news story. A jury has broken into fits of laughter after hearing how a cow spurned the advances of a man on trial for having sex with a sheep. This is not Wales, but it's on the <laughs> same island. England? Scotland? 
Paul Lovell, 61, was spotted by a couple allegedly trying to engage in intercourse with the sheep and after and failing to seduce a cow near the Tottenham Hotspur training ground in North London last September. How do you fail to... I mean, like, okay, first of all, you can't seduce something that's not... I mean, like, seduction is like a verbal process. It's like, hey, hey, ladies. I mean, you know, you can't... Like, you have to seduce of your own species. And if you're human, seduction involves your words, not your pheromones. So how can you, like... With the, did he have a D20 and he failed a seduction check? Like, how? <laughs> did you fail... How do you... Did they write, failed to seduce a cat? It's just... No. Yeah. It's just... It's like the guy was trying to get the cows to give him a blowjob. And when he... It they wouldn't... He said, he said, fuck y'all, go fuck a sheep like the Welshman does. But, like, cows have really big teeth. And I know that they're not, like, you know, fang teeth. But they're made for, like, crushing and chomping. And you don't want that to be crushed like that. No. It's like... It's like, I, I no, it hurts when somebody just gives me a little too much teeth in a blowjob. Imagine a cow! Cow wouldn't know better. I it's, can't imagine a cow. I can't, I can't, there's no possible way that, just, no. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, wow. It's just, it's, it's, wow. Just, just, Wow. And of course, the jury members laughed, as, as I mentioned at the beginning of the story. Well, I would have too. Yeah, and the judge told them off like, "Oi, this is a serious courtroom here. You don't need to be laughing." And the, and of course, on the inside, he's like, ah, he, "He couldn't get it with a cat." Oh, like he, he kind of has to, because yes, I mean, like even in an American courtroom, you'd be found in contempt, yeah, just for being loud. But I bet he got home, but like, honey, you'll never guess what. Yes. <laughs> Case I had today. Oh my god. Yeah. Now, now, Gordon, now, they also say... Was it his cow? I don't think it was. Okay. So the prosecutors already dropped a charge of indecent exposure due to lack of evidence against the guy. But the prosecutor changed the wording of a second charge of outraging public ind indecency to include fellatio with a cow. <sighs> wow! <laughs> because when King Arthur, allegedly, came up with the modern British judicial system... He totally intended for it to contain the phrase fellatio with a cow. I know. It's like, you know, it's like back then, you know, you would think that, 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 I, I mean, I don't know. It was like, oh, what, what, what medieval dark ages, England, you know, people, pro and who knows? People may have been having cows as a matter of fact, you know, how, you know, and then the ones that had sex with the rats. Well, how do you think the bubonic clay got around? I'm pretty sure if you did that, though, you'd get accused of witchcraft. Probably. But you never know. Because animal husbandry, that doesn't mean what you think it means. Oh, dear. <laughs> oh, but yeah. And next one, take a shot. This is Florida. Oh. Cocoa, Florida, even. I've been around there. I've got family near there. Do they have chocolate? They do in their, in their stores, just like any other town. Oh. Well, because it's like – all right, so if you go to Hershey, Pennsylvania – it's named for Milton Hershey. Mm -hmm. It's a town that, you know, like he founded and stuff like that. Right. So they, there's a lot of chocolate around. So that's why I thought maybe it was like a thing. Yeah. I wish it was. I would have been. So I got all awesome. excited. Yeah. That would have been one more thing you go to Central Florida for. You know, Disney World, Sea World, Bush Gardens, uh, Ripley's, believe it or not, museum ha has a museum down there. Uh, I want to go there. I've been to the one in Orlando. It's pretty neat. I've. I've only been to Florida once, and that was in senior year for the band trip to Disney. Mm -hmm. And so we basically did Universal Studios and Disney, and that's it. Yeah. So. Ours was similar. Huh. So, yeah. But a Central Florida student who turned to pornography to help his family pay bills told the local news station that he had been kicked out of his high school. Obviously, the, guy, the kid is 18. Otherwise, he wouldn't have done it. Yeah. Just, just to put it out there. And even the news article make sure, makes it clear the kid is 18. Well, you know what? If you're an adult, it's what you want to do, you know? Yeah. Just no one can tell you not to, exactly. as long as it's legal. Mm -hmm. Robert Marucci makes no apologies for performing in porn, good, and considers his work like any other job. Guess what? So does every other porn star. You know, you talk to them. I, I follow them on Twitter. They're, it's just like, okay, you know, yeah, I get naked and have sex on camera. You know, it's, it's nothing but a thing. It's an enjoyable thing, but it's still nothing but a thing. Until two weeks ago, the 18-year-old was like any other high school senior. 
but he said when students at Coco High School discovered his videos on an adult website, they started showing each other his explicit pictures on their phones at school. You know, like teenagers will do. That must have been so easy to get to get a date to the prom. Hey, ladies, aren't you? Yes, I am. <laughs> oh, yes. But then he, the guy, the kid said he became the target of bullies, and now he said the school wants him gone. I feel like I've been treated unfairly and this is unjust, he said. What can they legally expel him for, though? Uh, he didn't break any laws. It took place outside the school. Let's see, his mother said that she knew her son was working in adult films and, and reiterating that he took the roles to support her financially. Which, you know, good on him. Afterwards spread, the... Marucci said administrators expelled him, saying he was a major disruption. In a referral slip, administrators wrote that he threatened to bring weapons to the school, something he denies. So, how do you make that jump? This sounds like a really good case for the ACLU. Yeah, and I think I don't I don't remember if that's if they were going to be bringing it in. I didn't see it on here, but it, it's it's like. Expel him for causing a major disruption. Okay, this is Florida. We have we have had fist fights that causes that's caused major disruptions, and the kids well, get minute, suspended at most. If, if they if they they said that oh he threatened to bring weapons to school. Did they say if he felt threatened or not? Because it's Florida, stand your ground. Yeah, he's an adult. He's eighteen. Yeah, he is. Oh, but according to this article, I don't see anything that uh, that makes them wonder why they would be worried about him bringing weapons to school. It, it seems like they just put it in there to try and give more of a justification than the principal just doesn't want, you know, is is a moral, you know, one of those moral guardian bitches who just, well, oh, he does something I don't approve of. I want him out of my school, even though it does not affect my school directly and the students are obviously not mature enough to handle it. You know, it, it's and, and it says here became the target of bullies. He's the one being bullied, and he's the one having to pay. It's the same kind of mentality that says, oh, you're being bullied, just man up and take it. Or do this, change that, and the bullies will stop. Well, you know how they always say if someone bullies you, it's because they're jealous? I think that this does prove that case. Yeah, because, hey, he's getting better. He's like, he's like, he, he's comes to school and they're like, hey, would you, Mike, I don't know if his name is Mike, what'd you do this weekend? Um, got mad pussy and got paid for it? How about you? <laughs> Asshole! Yeah, yeah they're probably, probably a little bit jealous. I mean, and even then, you know, when, when you understand what goes on in porn, especially for a guy, well, this, I mean, guy I, this guy, not only, not only is he getting mad pussy, you know, for his day job, he also has the ability to control when he comes. Well, I mean, I'm sure it's like work. You know, I've never like been in porn, so I can't say whether or not it's not. I mean, I'm sure it's not exactly easy. Oh no, it's, you know, it's probably like takes hours. You have to get from the right angle. Like do it again. We we flubbed that take. Sorry. Yeah. I mean, but still, he he didn't drop out. You know, I mean, I think that's the important thing here. You know, he could have just, he's 18, he could have just dropped out to work full time, mm -hmm. but he didn't. He's, you know, he's doing porn or whatever, but he's also staying in school. So, like, isn't that a good thing or am I just old? That is a good thing, and, and, and it could be just the way both of us are old, uh, as we established earlier. But but it's a good thing. He's he's trying to stay in school. Now, now I will say there was an update on this particular article um, after the after it originally went up, the the kid has since been allowed to return to class. Oh, that's good. But the fact that, I mean, he's got like another five months, and he gets his diploma, and he's out of there. So yeah, so it, it's just it, it, the the school fucking Florida moral majority got to have the moral majority stick up their ass. School here, where teachers will be fired for just posing in suggestive bikini pictures. Or not even suggestive, just a bikini picture, you know, for for some kind of advertising for for a boating company or whatever. Oh my God, teachers have forms and uh, uh, uh. it's just. Uh, uh. This is why I'm moving to a country that doesn't care this much about religion. Yeah. Although not all, I mean, not all folks are bad. Like we on Lesbian Talk this week, we had on um, Zach Lawrence, who's a a Christian uh, reviewer and indie filmmaker. Mm -hmm. And he's he's really nice. Yeah, I've I've seen a 
one or two of his things. He's not bad. Well, we saw his movie. It was cute. You know, there was definitely, I mean, he acknowledged it. Definitely. They had a very low budget mm -hmm. because they were doing it. It was, it was an indie production that they had started as a web series and then continued as a movie. Right. So there were definitely spots where having a better budget would have made it a better movie, but it, it wasn't very offensive. It was, it was a pretty good movie, you know? Yeah. So, I mean, he could totally make a movie about this. There you go. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. I, I'm, I'm going to start with fun, get Gomer out of Florida again, and make sure you keep him out of there. Um, I'm thinking Chicago. Um, that may or may not have to do with the fact that my girlfriend lives in Chicago. And maybe. <laughs> but but I've no. only been to Chicago once. That was the airport. But I did make sure to have one of their hot dogs and have a huge slice of their pizza. Mm -hmm. And then I got in the plane, and I was like, why do I feel sick? Oh, no. Because I, like, ate this thing in, like, 20 minutes. Oh. Because well, I was flying back from New Orleans, mm -hmm. and I had a stopover at O'Hare, and that's when um, my wife and I weren't – we weren't we, – this was way, 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 way back in the day, so we weren't even really dating. We hadn't met in person yet, mm -hmm. but we were kind of flirting often. And so I said, oh, well, I've got, you know, the layover tomorrow on my way back, and – and she said, oh, in Chicago, fantastic. You have to – I've been to Chicago. You have to try the, their pizza and their hot dogs. And so I wanted to try them both so I could tell her, oh, I, I tried these. So I, like, woofed them down and went to my game. <laughs> Aww. Well, I was all right. Yeah, but Chicago anyway. – I've, 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 I've driven through Chicago numerous times, you know, with the driving jobs and everything. Only set foot in Chicago proper once, and that was on my way back from MAGFest 2012. And that's because we had like a seven-hour wait for a bus to take us back to Indy. Because for whatever reason, uh, Amtrak, you know, they got us from Indy to D.C., but they couldn't get us from D.C. back to Indy. They they looped up the long way and went to Chicago, which I thought was weird. They could have just looped from Chicago down to Indy again. But, you know, whatever. It, it, we still managed it. And, and it's not like we had to pay extra for the bus either. So. Oh, that's good then. We just were just stuck in Chicago for seven hours. Oh, but you know, from what I what I what little I experienced of it, it's pretty good. So well, apparently, it's it's a pretty nice city. I mean, if the if everything absolutely falls through with me going over and going to school in Derry, then that's probably what we're going to do is bring her over and then move to Illinois where we're legal and I can get her health insurance and at least we we will know some people in the area. Yeah. Oh, so uh, speaking speaking of um, um, LGBT issues, this one I, I think this one's a couple of weeks old. I've been holding on to this one. The, for the first time, a federal U.S. judge has ruled a persecution of LGBT people is a crime against humanity. Ah, oh, damn straight. This sets a precedent. <laughs> you said damn straight. <laughs> oh. Yeah, damn Skippy. This sets a precedent ensuring the fundamental human rights of LGBTI people are protected under international law. It comes as a Ugandan LGBTI advocacy organization filed a lawsuit against prominent U.S. anti-gay extremist Scott Lively. Oh yeah, he's on he's on trial. Oh uh, yes, he's been on trial for a while. Yep, this this is it. This is this is the guy you know, who who's let's see what do we have here. Uh, he is accused of helping to play a part in the persecution, arrest, and murder of gay people in Uganda. And of course, his liar, lawyers are requesting to dismiss the lawsuit because, but it's 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 the Bible. It's Christianity. No, just because you're a Christian does not mean you get to tell people that you know whether that not they deserve to live or die just because you think that what they do is icky and sinful. You don't do And that. for Christ's sake, people have fucked with Africa enough. Like, literally. Like, just everybody needs to just let them do their thing. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Lawsuit states lively collaborated with key Ugandan government officials and religious leaders that allegedly resulted in the introduction of the Kill the Gays bill, which I would like to kill that bill. Uh, the founder of Abiding Truth Ministries, Lively has made a career of stirring up anti-gay feelings in the United States and across the world. He co-authored The Pink Swastika, which suggests homosexuals were truth inventors of Nazism and the guiding force behind many Nazi atrocities. Yeah, because not like one of the first sets of people that Hitler annihilated were gays. This is true, actually. Yeah, it's like... There are books about it. Read up. Uh-huh. Uh, and, and let's see. In 2007, he toured 50 cities in Russia where he's accusing of recommending a ban on gay propaganda 
And we see where that's going in Russia. Really, really, really. Wait, wait, who is it over there? Is it still Putin over there? Yeah. Yeah. It's like, really, Putin? What the fuck? The fuck well, is that? Actually, still comrade? I just read an op-ed piece today, this morning, about, you know, we're going crazy about Russia. But there are a small, a small selection of states and cities in the U.S. that have anti-gay, quote-unquote, propaganda laws. Mm-hmm. Texas and Utah are two of them. Yes, they are. I mean, let's see, Utah... I mean, I'm just saying. Yeah, Utah, didn't they, like... Wasn't there, like, a gay marriage, you know, is it's allowed, but, you know, the Republican governor is like, we're not going to recognize... Okay, okay, it's legal, but we can, we're not going to recognize them. It's... There is... Well, no, what's happened is there's an appeal, <laughs> but the judge has granted a stay during the appeal, meaning that the people who got married are not recognized as by the state as having got married. However, the federal government, the Treasury Department said... You can file your taxes married. So the, the the federal government is recognizing those Utah people as being married. Okay. And, of course, you know, fucking Utah Republican. We don't want them gay people get married because Jesus and Bible is like, stop using your goddamn religion to justify your homophobia and your bigotry. Well, there, there was one, one junior congressman who looks like he just stepped right off the farm in Oklahoma who is uh, sponsoring a, a, a state um, legislature bill to um, invalidate all marriages. In I the state. saw that one. Completely take the state out of marriage entirely because better no one should be able to get married than gay people should be allowed to get married. That, that is the equivalent of, of somebody just taking their ball and wanting to go home. Well, first of all, it'll never pass because that would just completely screw tax records for everyone in that state forever. Mm-hmm. But it's just... It's like, damn. You know, I, okay, I gotta wonder, did I actually put that in this in this thing? Because that sounds like something I would have put in. I don't I don't see it in my file. But this was like, this This happened like two days ago, though, so. Yeah. Well, well I mean, the, the uh, you know, the Coco store, no, was it Coco? Now, there's one in here that I put in just, like, within the past couple of days before recording oh, this, okay. so. <laughs> so, you know, a couple of days, that, that, that's not much of a thing. Oh, so... So yeah, oh, so there is that. Thank that's that's that 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 story is a bit of good news. He is the guy is charged with crimes against humanity as he should be, because it is. Oh, our next one. Oh, Mr. Huckabee, Mike Huckabee. Hi, how you doing? He's still alive. He's still alive. He's still doing things for Fox News as any as as I, I, we're gonna see Mitt Romney on Fox News doing commentary at some point. Mark my words. Mitt Romney is more boring than Bob Dole. Like, remember, like, back in the day on, on SNL, they're like, Bob Dole says things are stuff. Bob Dole, oh, Bob, oh, and he falls asleep? <laughs> that's, like, really, that's how, that's as boring as Mitt Romney is. Now. Yeah. Oh, but Mike Huckabee, former governor, tur- current D- TV gadfly, lifelong Jim Neighbors gop- doppelganger, which, that's the article talking, not me, wants you to know Republicans have no war on women. Bullshit! <laughs> If anything, it's liberals who hate the foxes with their free love and free birth control and something called Uncle Sugar. And they have a quote. Republicans don't have a war on women. We're having a war for women to empower them to be something other than victims of their gender. If the Democrats want to insult the women of America by making them believe that they are helpless without Uncle Sugar coming in and providing for them a prescription each month for birth control because they can't control their libido or their reproductive system without the help of the government, then so be it. Let us take that discussion all across America because women are far more than the Democrats have played them to be. Mike Huckabee, fuck you. One flaw that I've noticed right away in, in his in his statement was the fact that he says we're fighting a war for women because they can't do it themselves. Yeah. Like there are there are women Republicans I know because they bitch on Twitter occasionally. Mm-hmm. But so I just it, it kind of confuses me how whenever you hear a Republican pundit talking, even female pundits like Sarah Palin and what's her face the uh, the with the eyes <laughs> with the eyes you know the one uh, Michelle Bachman. Yes, yeah, that, I, I can never remember her name. But, like, they always even talk like they're some kind of, not a, like, different species, but it's just weird. It's like they talk about, like, Republican issues with women as though it's some kind of thing that's divorced from them. And I'm like, you're women. Yeah, you are a part that's of you. this. 
So you see what these people are fighting when it comes to gender equality. We're, you know, they're fighting for you. That applies to you. <laughs> yeah. You know. You know the, the the fight for gender equality in the workplace and and everything. Imagine that as a river. These women who are fighting against it, you're the dam in the damn river. <laughs> the dam in the damn river. Yes. Good job with it. But another thing is that, and and I hate to be the one that keeps bringing this up because I never had had to use it myself. But there's more uses for birth control than preventing conception. Yeah. I've... Like I've I actually uh, someone that I dated years and years ago back in the day mm -hmm. was on birth control, even though there was no remote chance of pregnancy was because that they had, you know, such bad problems like hormonally mm -hmm. and they were in such pain every month that taking birth control really helped with that. Yeah. And having affordable, if not free access to that birth control will help a lot more down the road. You know, I mean, and think about this. OK, which is better to to all these companies out there? And I know there are a bunch of companies that bitch about, you know, health care having to provide you know birth control for women or what have you think about it like this which is which is less uh, uh which which would cost less okay which would be worse for you uh having letting a woman get pregnant be out of work for however long and then having to come back and thus for that period of time whether or not you can have somebody stand in for her you know you're out that particular amount of man hours well, yes and yes and no because um, maternity leave is often is often backed by whatever plan you're you're using. Mm -hmm. So maternity leave is a benefit that's incorporated into your healthcare already. Right. So even if you have private or public healthcare, maternity leave is pretty much a given as long as you have that benefit. Okay. I mean, I technically, if I ever had to use it, would have access to maternity leave okay. with the health plan that that and I don't I don't have Obamacare. I have a, a plan that through my employer that I pay for. But it's it's not so much that it's just the idea that these things that are so easy and so insignificant and just something that a modern society should have, you know, people are coming at it from a moralistic standpoint saying, well, you shouldn't have sex. Well, why not? It's fun. It's how you have children. It's what we're biologically driven to do. Well, you shouldn't. You should resist that. And anything that that makes it easy on you, then that's that's no. Like I almost expect to, if, you know, two years in the future, we see an article about, you know, a, a tremendous breakthrough by like a, you know, multicultural team of, of people from all over the world has, has finally collaborated and they've come up with a viable AIDS vaccine. And the whole world is rejoicing, saying, wow, this is great. This is such a horrible, devastating disease. And we finally we can we can eradicate it. This is so great. I can see people having a problem with it. Saying no, but see, only the gays get it, and then and then only people who have sex with with the gays. So if you if you get AIDS, then you deserve it. There shouldn't be a there shouldn't be a vaccine. I can actually see people trying to deny use of a vaccine on moralistic standpoints, and that's when you really have to stop and say, Jesus fuck. Yeah, it's it's, it's the, these people. Thankfully, as people in you know generations ours and further up, as they're getting up there, they're getting older. They're realizing that a lot of this shit is bullshit, and, and we're working to change it as much as we can. It, it, it's slow, but it's coming. Oh, but speaking speaking of Republican women. He said. <laughs> one of the Republicans lining up to challenge Representative Jen Schakowsky, Sh Shakowsky, I guess is how you pronounce it, who is Democrat of Illinois. For her seat representing the ninth, di ninth District of Illinois, told the Chicago Daily Herald that God is angry with the United States and has sent scourges to punish the American people. Oh, you're one of those people. Candidate Suzanne At At Atanas? Oh, I think I read about her. Yeah, believes that autism and forms of dementia are punishments sent by God because of the growing support for gay – for I, I was about to say gay marriage, but marriage equality in the country and the prevalence of abortion. I'm a so there was never dementia or autism ever before in the history of mankind until now. I know, right? I mean, it's like I'm willing to bet that as far back. And, if, and in fact, you can't even blame it on support for marriage equality or abortion because, you know what? Guys fell in love with other guys even before, you know, gay marriage was a big issue. You know, women had abortions before abortion became a big issue. 
It you know what this reminds me of? This reminds me of that we had an author in the other day to do a signing, and he wrote all these health books. Mm -hmm. And he told the crowd that there's no such thing as breakfast. It was invented by, quote, unquote, the breakfast industry. And so we were talking about this in the break room, and I was like, yeah, because nobody ever ate food in the morning <laughs> until the 20th century. I know, right? Seriously? Oh, wait, but continue. Oh, I mean, even back then, they pro they pro the term breakfast has probably been around a long time. It is, because people have been eating in the morning since forever. Yeah, well, well, no, eating in the morning, obviously people have been doing that, but I'm talking just, just the term breakfast, you know. I mean, not, not, oh, not the action yeah, it's of it. To, yeah, it's to break the fast of night. It's like a real thing in the world, but mm -hmm. I don't like it. Oh, okay. So, so she goes on to say, "I am a conservative Republican, and I believe in God first. Which, which you know, why are the which subjects? automatically makes you unfit for for service because you're supposed to believe in the Constitution first, politician. Exactly. God controls the weather, she said, and tornadoes are evidence of His wrath. Oh, one of you again. Are you Westboro Baptist? Are you sending people to Congress? You need to stop it. I just." Again, because there was no weather ever. I know, right? God is angry. We are provoking him with the emotions and the same-sex marriage and the civil unions and same-sex activity is going to increase AIDS. If it's in our military, we'll weaken our military. We need to respect God. Yes. This is why other countries laugh at us. Yeah, because it, it's fine. I've said it before. I will say it again. If you believe in all of this, that is fine. You, you have your convictions. You have this belief. That is fine. Keep us the fuck out of it, please. Keep meteorology the fuck out of it. Like, oh, yeah. seriously, like, it just doesn't <clears> – <throat> it's not like it rained today because God wanted to punish you for lying to your parents by canceling your baseball game. That's not the way the world works. It rained because of a high-pressure system. Mm -hmm. You know, weather happens, and we can – that's how we can predict the weather now. Yeah. Because we understand, to a some degree, the science behind it. It's just... <sighs> yeah, and the next thing you know, you're going to have somebody blame the polar vortex on a family of Greek, Greek Russians in a, some kind of island off the coast of Venezuela. Uh, anybody who gets that reference, uh, you get a cookie. Uh, but here's here's the thing. She ran in the 9th ninth, ninth District uh, Republicans primaries in 2010 and 2012, and she lost both times. That's another big sign. Third time see, the charm, that, apparently, see, for her. That's a, that's a sign, too. That's God telling you, you need, to not, you need to stop this. You need to not run for Congress. God is giving you a sign, and you're ignoring it. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it, even in your own Bible, does it not say to, to pray in your closet? You know, to, It says closet? I, I think. It, it's, well, it's I, like, I know, yeah, it's, it's, like, it's like your pious and humble man does not make a big show of being out in the square praying. Yeah, in other words... I just pray in your closet, God said. Yeah, pretty much. Oh, so going on, more of the Republican stuff. The State of the Union happened. Uh, yeah. I unfortunately didn't see it. I haven't really caught up on it. I need to. Um, it started out... I was out, playing Dragon Age at the time, so... Yeah, I was probably working on something. Let's see, it was Tuesday night... I might have been recording a Poor Charlie podcast at that point. I don't remember. But it started out like dozens of other interviews after Tuesday night's State of the Union address. But when NY1 reporter Mike Scotto decided to press Representative Michael Grimm on his personal campaign finances, oh, this guy. The Republican <laughs> congressman abruptly ended the interview, which, okay, that's his thing there. You know, and, and he said, this is only about the president's speech, thank you. And he walked off camera. And, it, and it's certainly not the first time a politician has walked out during a live interview, but what happened next, I've seen it. I'm pretty sure you've seen it. Mm -hmm. Af after uh, Stato returned to his report, Representative Grimm, a former FBI agent and Marine, suddenly stormed back into the camera frame, whispering a threat to the reporter. I will break you in half, he said, reporting, reportedly threatening to throw the journalist over a balcony inside the U.S. Congress. Dude! Because this is totally TMZ. It's like, what the fuck? I mean, and he's he's not going to be charged. Be, and, and I think that's at least that's at least criminal harassment or something like yeah, that. Yeah, it's like, okay, he he's a reporter. He's asking you questions. Yeah, okay, reporting. You know, paparazzi. I'm, I'm not this guy, obviously, but you know, you know, the paparazzi. Yeah, they're annoying. And and whenever one of them gets injured trying to get 
you know, trying to violate somebody's privacy. Yeah, we, we can laugh and cheer a little bit about but that, the thing especially is, if they something stupid. But this guy wasn't doing that. He was just in the line of duty trying to get his opinion on things and, 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 and wanted, a, wanted an answer for something that the people were wanting to know. Yeah, he wasn't really paparazzi. He, 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 the guy agreed to do this interview. He asked a question the guy didn't like. He went away. Okay, fine. Everybody moves on. He's like, wait a second. I didn't get the last word. I better go back. Yeah. And, and and the guy's like, you're not man enough. You're not man enough. I'll break you in half like a boy. That's really unfortunate implications there, given where my mind goes. Uh, and and is it me, it's or just... do I always – I'm always thinking it's like he says that. I'm thinking, I would break you. You know, like, like that guy from one of the Rocky movies. Oh. But it's like, dude. You know, if you if you don't have anything to worry about, why the fuck are you threatening a reporter over it? I know, right? Like, like, like what does he go to go home and be like, well, I sure showed him myself. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, he, he, you know, he's gonna be like that. You know, everybody. Oh, I showed him. He gets home. He gets into the privacy of his own room, and he's gonna be like, oh shit, people realize it now. People realize I'm in deep shit now. Well. It's another one of the consequences of people who don't understand how the internet works. Like back in the day, all right, you could probably get away with that. But these days, someone got that. I mean, even if they hadn't been filming, you know, mm -hmm. you, you got got. And it'll be all over YouTube within the next 20 minutes. It'll, be, it'll go viral. I mean, why do people keep thinking they can do whatever the hell they want and no one will know? It's not the way the world works anymore, unfortunately. No. That, why do you think cops are wanting to, you know, try and outlaw the, uh, you know, filming of cops in the, in just the normal course of their duty? Because it's just, you know, they don't want to get caught doing something illegal. Obviously, not all cops are going to do that, and and I'm sure there are a good, decent amount of cops that are in support of it. But the ones that aren't, why are they not in support of it? I wonder. Hmm. Hey, you just you can't get away with as much bullshit as you used to be able to. Yeah. It's like, sorry, you know, you're just going to have to deal with it like some petulant child has to be taught. He can't always get his own goddamn way. <sighs> so, Although I do want to say it's not just a Republican thing. I think it's just an older person thing because I've seen I've seen Democratic people do really stupid things, not realizing that this is going to be all over in 20 minutes. Yeah, if, if you're in any kind of public face and and you know what, you and I, we, we apply to this as well. It applies to us. You know, don't do something absolutely goddamn bug nuts fucking stupid. And, and definitely don't go and threaten people with things that, you, you know, do not threaten people when you have no bite to back up your bark. <clears throat> uh, you know, so anyway, to lighten things up a little bit, this one I found like last night. It's out of Ohio, Ohio in a place called Licking County. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's where all the cows are from the first story. Maybe. Licking County, Ohio. I have actually been through Licking County. It's right on I uh, Interstate 70 on the west side of Ohio um, – no, east side of Ohio rather. Did you get licked? Uh, I would like to say I did, but no. Mm. Oh. But a Licking County woman hates her first name <laughs> so much she's changing it to something she says is a little more suitable to her. Her name, Sexy. That's what she was named, or that's what the new name she chose. This is the new name she's chose. She's chosen. <laughs> Sheila Crabtree has gone by her middle name Renea since she was a teenager. She says she's hated her first name for no particular reason nearly her entire life. It's an ugly name I was cursed with, she said. My mom chose my middle name, Renea, which I love. And my dad chose the ugly name. Cra What's the first name? Uh, the first name is Sheila. Mm. Yeah. You know, and you know, she said she quietly decided to fix the problem, but petitioned to have it legally changed to sexy in court. Her husband sometimes calls him calls her sexy and just decided that because it's fun. Wasn't expecting anyone to find out. And I didn't even tell my husband I was going through with it. You might you know, okay, you're in, you're in a marriage. You really, really should do that. Yeah. Maybe she was gonna be a surprise. Like she was gonna, he's be like, "Hey, sexy." She'd be like, "You're calling my name." No, really, look at the certificate. He'd be like, "Oh, honey." Like, I, I maybe she didn't mean for him to find out by like national news. Yeah, but part of the application process requires running a notice in the newspaper, and which is really? where 
Yeah, which is when her plan became public, which I can understand because, you know, you you know, there might be people that want to try and find her or, or want to talk to her or whatever. And, yeah, they, that's... and, and you know, they, 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 they want to be able to get in, t- in touch with her. Yeah, but here's the thing. It's the, all right, well, here's the reason why this is a bad idea. First of all, we live in a global society. So really, do they think that everybody she knows is going to be in that one little town? Second of all, this might just be an Ohio thing because I've known people that have changed their names. And the people that I have known, um, for the most part, have changed their names have been because um, they are, are transgender. Mm-hmm. And they, you know, a, a very good friend of mine. You know, and he got his new driver's license was showing. He's like, look at this. But they just had to go to court and fill out some forms, and that's okay. But can you imagine if that was you, you know, and you lived in Ohio and you're transgendered, and you're like, oh well, I want to get my name changed, but you have to put it in the paper. That's like, I don't know. That, that's kind of like asking for harassment and abuse. It sounds like. Yeah, I, 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 I can see that side. I, I can honestly see both ends of that one, and then. And especially with Ohio, like you said, yeah, because now I'm imagining it like here in, in Graceville. Yeah. And, and of course, you have to go in front of the judge. You know, and the judge has to approve the change, even though it's your own goddamn name. Yeah. In Pennsylvania, as far as I know, you just go and you fill out a form and the justice stamps it. Yeah. And I know this because I've considered changing my first name to middle name a few times, but there you I go. didn't. Well, yeah, and she said if it doesn't go through, she joked that she tried next time to try to change it to Sparkle. <laughs> because she has a sparkly personality. No, you know what? Good for her. I, I, I hope that it goes well for her. Yeah. It's, it's. I mean, she's an adult. It's her name. She could get it changed if she wants. Yeah. And, 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 and even if it's silly, even if we think it's silly and we laugh at it, it is her name. And if she wants yeah. to go by it, then more power to her. We just think don't worry, sexy Renee. We're, we're sex. We're sexy Renee. Renee, Renee. Uh... Say, don't worry, sexy Renee. We're behind you all the way. Yes. <laughs> in a very totally platonic, innocent way. Yes, and we'll we'll make sure we don't check out your ass too much. <laughs> okay, um, I'm gonna skip down to my last one here because the the next one is a little long. We're running a little short on time, but um, the last one. I talk too much. No, it's okay. It's okay. We ma- it makes for a good show. But our last story, take another shot. It's another Florida. Oh. And I put this one in here because I'm within re- about an hour, hour and a half of Fort Walton Beach. A man was arrested after he grabbed his mother by the neck and then wrapped his arm around her neck. <gasps> yes, it, it, is, it starts horribly. According to an Okaloosa County Sheriff's Office re- arrest report, the apparent victim called 911 to report her son was out of control. She said he woke up and accused her of stealing his medication. He then placed one of his hands around her neck and asked her if she were going to call the police. A short time later, he allegedly wrapped his arm around her neck from behind. The son told deputies he woke up and couldn't find his pills and confronted his mother. Well, so that much checks out. He wouldn't answer questions and became combative, the deputy wrote in the report. He said, I'm a nut, and told the deputy to ask the government what happened because they are following him, the report indicated. (laughs) <laughs> what the hell are you on dude are... well he might be he sounds pretty classically schizophrenic apparently but it's like at least he admits he is a nut and and and, and just ask the government they know what happened they're following him i've actually known somebody who um who used to do meth and i and i and i want to and i have to think that you know that and other drugs she had tried brought out like a paranoid schizophrenia part of her i think it i think that's what it is because for a while she would see shadows everywhere and she thought that the government had put a chip in her head and were spying on her and i look back on it now and i'm thinking okay you lived in a trailer park in graceville florida where the most exciting thing that goes on is the goddamn harvest festival you know second only to the high school homecoming game Government is not it, – it's it's not really a, a, a thing for the government to really want to spy on. Well, here's, here's the issue about, about paranoid and conspiracy ideation. Mm-hmm. No matter what you say to someone, it really doesn't make sense because 
Now, I have no clinical evidence to back this up. This is just a theory that I have. Right. And when I go into psychology, it's one of the things that I want to I want to study. But it's kind of like the pattern recognition software in their brain is a little bit it's it's malfunctioning. So you see you see things that seem like oh yeah that that totally makes sense. Like if you and I were roommates mm -hmm. and you came home and I wasn't there, and you saw on the table a list of groceries. And the some were checked off and some were crossed off. And then um, you looked around and my purse wasn't there and the car wasn't. So you might draw the conclusion based on all the evidence and all the signs that I've gone out grocery shopping. Uh -huh. And then when I came home with groceries in my hand, you'd be like, oh, yes, that's right. It all makes sense. You were out grocery shopping. Yeah. But a, another person who who has a, a problem like that might put those those pieces together and come to a completely different solution. And for some reason, a lot of times when people are mentally ill, that manifests as a paranoid ideation. Like my friend was dating um, this person and we, we went to a club once or we driving you know, on the way home and the, the, the significant other says to me, so uh, what do you do for a living? And I told him, well, you know, I'm, I'm in telecom. You know, I, I, I play with Excel all day. I sit on deployment calls. I, I run reports and I do analysis. And he says, so well, what does that have to do with telecom? I'm like, well, we build, you know, we upgrade cell towers. We, we do that kind of stuff. We work for carriers. And he says, oh, that's kind of cool. I said, yeah, it's good to live. And he goes, you know, I really wish, you know, if you guys in the FBI had just come to me and said, look, we want to know what you're talking about on the phone, I'd have totally just let you listen. And mm -hmm. this is this was a few years after the whole Patriot Act thing and the, the federal wiretapping scandal. And I, and I said, well, no, no, that was landlines the government was tapping. And he said, no, 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 the FBI is listening to my phone calls. And, and, I, and I tried to, to tell him, I said, look, first of all, they, that kind of equipment is very expensive. Second of all, we have to get landlord approval for every bit of, of technology we put on a site. They, we, we pay the landlord to own these buildings and the land for these towers hundreds of thousands of dollars. And third of all, all of the equipment that we put up has to be weatherproof, it has to be exposure-proofed. A lot of these 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 monopoles, these towers, these clusters have so many different carriers on them. There's not even room to upgrade. Right. I'm telling you that this would be such a complicated, impossible process. And he's like, I mean, it's cool. I know they told you to tell me that, and that's fine. I don't I don't mind. And I said, all right. <laughs> yeah. Although, although it is it is something now nowadays now now that we know the NSA is listening. Hi NSA, how you doing? Oh. They're totally the same right now. Yes, because because they always listen to everything we say, always. <laughs> okay, okay. The, the reality is they probably aren't listening to everything. Not not. I'm say not if you're listening, <clears throat> write the show. Yes, please write in the show. Um, we would like to hear from you, and and you can prove me wrong by by not by by me claiming that you guys are not actively listening to this if show. If the NSA is listening, you should. Um, I can be found at the Omega at uh, but TV. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, you can watch all of my stuff there. I appreciate the views. Spread it around the office. Yes, and, and you and you can find well, you can find her stuff and my stuff at rtgomer.com. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, you know, all the views, all of the views in the world. But um, so that that with all that said, that's going to be it for the news. And we've got about two minutes left. I want to close on this one. I found it. I, I want to say it was like a Yahoo Answers thing or something. Oh, no. But but it, it's it's a funny one, and it involves Pokemon. Pokemon has turned my child against me is the title of the thing. What? Yes. I am a dedicated Christian, and judging by what I've seen on television, Pokemon is a game full of violence, slavery, and abuse. That's not a Christian line of thinking. That's PETA. Forcing creatures to fight for their own entertainment is appalling, and I cannot believe it's rated for children because it's fantasy. I also cannot believe it has been going on since the 90s, causing evil to spread. Yesterday, my son asked me what I was fearing. He asked for a po he asked for a Pokemon game. I was shocked because I knew my sister let her sons play that dreadful game, and my sister is dim and does not follow in God's footsteps. Dim. <laughs> wow. I told him no and immediately sent him to his room. Bitch, you just... Why? Just... A poor little kid. I think, what do you want? I want this. Fuck you. What are you room? Why? Uh-huh. And then I phoned my pastor, and he recommended steering my son away from that awful game. You know, like pastors do. My son is 11 years old, and he has become very cold with me ever since I said no. Well, maybe that's because you punished him for asking a question. Yeah. Ah, oh, he called me insane, which is a reflect of what the game can do to a child. 
He hasn't been playing it. So it's not the game, it's you. I will not allow any kind of things in my house that are in any way offending God. Well, there goes half the world. I threw away all of my... Throw away all of your polyester blends. Yes. I threw away all of my son's Harry Potter books and forbidden him from watching the movies. You are a... <laughs> See, basically, when you treat your when you treat a child like that, you're basically encouraging them to do it as much as possible. Yes. He's thinking about Harry Potter right this second. Yes. I am a good mother, and any parent who lets their kids play Pokemon will grow up with a power-obsessed, violent, child-worshipping Satan. Uh, what? Or else they'll grow up to be Link Clark. <laughs> Evolution is also in the game, which is against God's words. It is disgraceful and should be banned. No. 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 And and, and, and for, for all the Christians out there that may be listening, that may think that evolution and God's plans are mutually exclusive. They don't have to be. Maybe if, if you want to believe that God you know, had the, had the plan and the divine plan in mind, maybe evolution is how he set it in motion. Just saying. Uh, let's see. Well, yeah, because see, here's the thing. With Pokemon Evolve. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yes, oh my. Uh, my son has insulted me ever since this has happened. He told me that his friends play Pokemon, so I've told him he's not allowed near them again. It is causing a drift between our family. I've told my son various times that he will go to hell if he plays Pokemon, but the message is not sinking in. I gotta ask, this sounds kind of like a Poe. I, ho I really hope this is a Poe. I I, sus do. I suspect trolling. I hope so, but uh, but you know what is so bad, is 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 oh last line. I fear Satan is taking him from me. I, it, it, what I fear is that it is that the, the the way people are in this world, especially the 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 insane fundamentalist people that 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 do things in the name of Christianity and while they're cleaning off the sword, blood from their sword, is, is that. It's hard to tell anymore. That that's why these things can get so get people so riled up because there are actual people out there like this. This one case, yeah, maybe it's a troll, maybe it's a Poe. I hope it is. Problem is, there are other ones out here just like it that are serious. Oh. That's what I have to say about that. Yes. So with that, hopefully, yeah. I'm 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 going to laugh at this woman because she she well basically her kid's gonna grow up to be an agnostic atheist and um yeah good job you you or no he's gonna be the very best like no one ever was dude yes he is just saying just saying <laughs> yes he is <laughs> <laughs> okay. So with that, we're going to get out of here for this week. Thank you guys for listening. I know I mentioned at the end of last week's show we were going to have Lady Spaz on this week. Uh, unfortunately, schedules got you know kind of wibbly wobbly. Uh, we're going to try and reschedule her for another time. Uh, she is doing the great work of the theater stuff. So theater. Yes, I am not going to deny her that. <laughs> so um, so we're going to try and reschedule her at some point. Um. So, uh, so again, if you're tuning in expecting her to be on, I apologize. I, I should have put this at the front of the show, but, but I do apologize. Uh, if you want to find me on social media, you can find me at Gomer21XX on Twitter. You can find my stuff on RTGomer.com and NerdVice.com. And again, if, if you want to you know, monetarily help and, and, and help get things going, replace equipment or whatever, um, there's the Patreon page, Patreon.com slash Gomer21XX. There's also the... Uh, the uh, Rift Tracks links on the side of the page. Also, there's also the tip jar. You know, it all will be appreciated. And as far as the Patreon, I am going to work my ass off trying to find something else I can provide as as incentive. Because <laughs> I, I feel kind of bad with just those two. But it's not much I can do right now. So, um, so there's all of that. Uh, where can we find you, Omega? Oh, Jesus Christ, where can't you? Um, uh, you can find me at theomegagate.com. Um, flip the TV backslash the Omega dot whatever it is. I'm gonna blip. I have a YouTube account, but I'm presently feuding with someone, so I'm not much is being uploaded there. 
Uh, you can also find Lesbian Talk on Nerdvice. My stuff was on Nerdvice when I remembered to update. <laughs> <laughs> and you can also find uh, Lesbian Talk on thatguywiththeglasses.com. Yes. And, and of course, Lesbian Talk is also on my site as well. And there's like 30-some episodes on iTunes, and I'm trying to figure out how to update my RSS so that there's not just 30 at one time. There's all of them, but I'm working on that. Yeah, I, I've, I'm trying to work on. I need to work on getting all my shows up on on iTunes. Uh, need to trade notes with somebody. You know, you know, I'm 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 Facebook friends with Cassandra Baker. I need to like have a talk with her because yeah. she is the magic behind all of that for the twelve one beyond stuff. Um, so and 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 real quick, if you if you guys want to see somebody hop on the show in particular, you know, let us know. We'll we'll talk to the person. And we'll see what we can work out. But uh, until then. Thank you guys for listening. This is Gomer the Ranting Thespian with the Omega, signing off. Thespian Talk is an RT Gomer Productions presentation. Check us out at rtgomer.com.